Hello, well I'm Dr Eileen Black, I'm a curator of fine art in the Ulster Museum and I would look after our pre-20th century British oils, pre-20th century Irish oils, our Dutch and Flemish old masters and the 20th century collection as well. We're outside the Ulster Museum at the minute. And the Ulster Museum was closed for a number of years for refurbishment and opened last October. We opened with an art exhibition by a contemporary Irish artist called Sean Scully and it was a huge event but Scully closed in February and we spent some weeks bringing in our own collection and our own art collection was hung in the various galleries that I'm going to be describing to you. We're in a small gallery in the Ulster Museum and we're standing in front of the most important painting the museum owns. It's by the very famous landscape painter Joseph Mallard William Turner and it's entitled Dawn of Christianity Flight into Egypt. It's a late Turner, it was painted in 1841. Now we were given this in 1913 and it's just as well we were because we now could never afford to buy this. I mean Turner's prices are astronomically high and there's considerable competition when a Turner painting comes on the market. Turner was, in a way, the forerunner of Impressionism because in his late works, he left behind the definition of scenes in landscape and instead, as you can see in this painting, things become blurred. The background is blurred. You can see the Holy Family to the right fleeing into Egypt. But if you were to say, oh, there's Joseph, oh, there's Mary and there's the baby, you'd have a hard job actually finding them. Things are suggested rather than defined. And by painting in this way in his late works, he was very much at odds with the artistic establishment. People regarded him as a nutcase, to be honest, because he was morose, he was quiet, he kept himself to himself, and his style was very, very different. He is, in my book, and I think in the majority of art historians' books, an absolute genius. He, I think, changed the course of British landscape painting, and this is why, when you hear the name Turner, you're talking about a giant in the world of landscape painting. We're going to go and talk about one of our most famous portraits. It is a painting by Edward Maguire of Seamus Heaney, the very famous poet Seamus Heaney. Everything in this painting is defined, unlike the Turner, which was, what, a hundred years before and more, where there was very little definition. You have total definition here. You can see Heaney is seated behind it small table with a tablecloth on. There's the window behind with vegetation and birds. It's a very surreal painting. There's, I always find this portrait very menacing. But the fact that there are nature details in the background alludes to Heaney's stature as a poet of nature. I find this painting rather strange because if you look at it, you think, where is Heaney sitting? Is he sitting on the window ledge? He's almost suspended in space. And the actual posture of Seamus Heaney and the almost menacing and surreal landscape in the background gives the painting a very strange quality. It's very eye-catching. I also know of a head and shoulders of, of Heaney by the same artist. But this work is one of our absolute gems in Irish portraiture. We've just stopped in front of another landscape by an artist called James Arthur O'Connor who was working in Ireland in the early 19th century. And this is called Scene in County Wicklow and very nicely O'Connor has dated it. It was painted in 1820. It shows the Sugarloaf Mountains, the Great Sugarloaf and the Little Sugarloaf and it shows a river meandering under a bridge. The river is the River Dargle. James Arthur O'Connor, his early landscapes are very picturesque. His later ones became very dramatic. This is a work from his picturesque period. And in the foreground, there's a group, probably a family, of a woman holding a baby. She's almost like a Madonna and child. And her husband is lying on the ground, sleeping beside her. They are probably beggars or itinerants. Certainly, if they had any kind of money, they really wouldn't be sitting there. But you can see that the woman is wearing a red shawl. Now, one of James Arthur O'Connor's characteristics is he often puts a dash of red in the dress of his peasants in his landscapes to really heighten the colour of the foreground and draw your attention immediately to this little picturesque group of 
mother, baby and husband, probably in some kind of financial distress. It's an absolutely beautiful landscape. It has another worldly feel to it. It is very idealised. If you looked at that, you could be anywhere. You could be somewhere in Italy, somewhere in Tuscany. You could be anywhere other than among the mountains in Wicklow. We've moved down a few paintings and we're before my favourite picture of all. It's by an artist called James Glenn Wilson, a young chap who came from County Down, studied in Belfast in the early 1850s, joined the Royal Navy in 1852 as a ship's artist and eventually ended his days in Australia. The painting is called Immigrant Ship Leaving Belfast in 1852 and you see a group of heartbroken relatives at the quayside waving their loved ones off to America and the immigrant ship is sailing down Donegal Quay past various features in the landscape and out probably towards America. Wilson was a magnificent landscape painter. He was able to catch the, the formation of clouds, the, the pattern on the water. Uh, everything is so good in this. He was able to paint the details, what you call genre details, details of everyday life of these grief-stricken relatives. Because, you know, once you emigrated to Australia or America in the 1850s, you no, probably never came back. So it was a, an absolute final farewell 99% of the time. When I started in the Ulster Museum in 1973, there was absolutely nothing known about this artist. And over the years, I was able to bring him back from the dead, because that's virtually what I did, and was able to, through research and visits here, there and yonder, was able to write an artistic profile of him. And thank goodness now... He is mentioned and referred to in the Dictionary of Australian Artists. I've written about him and published him in books on Irish art. So I have given him a place in posterity, which is really the best thing that any art historian could ever do. If I could steal a painting, it would be that one. The Ulster Museum is open Tuesday to Sunday, 10 o'clock to 5. It's well worth a visit. Everybody come, you'll thoroughly enjoy it, and the food's very good. You can also check out, out our website, www.nmni.com. There's a vast variety of events for people of, of, with, all, with all interests, art, uh, natural sciences, and historical.